All right, I'm just trying a different format video today about making um, your own tap tempo buttons or switching buttons. Um, you can make them for like 20, 25 bucks uh, if you're doing a basic switch, um, which to me is more like a labor of love because you can buy them pre-done from JHS or MXR for like 35, 40 bucks. But if you want something custom, then it could be a pretty cool thing to do. Um, what I'm talking about is uh, a box that I just made that I'm calling the Tap and Stomp. So I made this box, you can see the enclosure there. Um, drilled two holes for the, one's for a tap tempo switch, one is for a stomp box switch. And then I labeled this side for the tap and the stomp. That's going to be the input jacks. Also made the, this part that has my signature and a serial number. I found these cool um, dry transfer lettering on Amazon. I'll try to leave a link for that. But these boxes come from Amazon like this, unpainted, undrilled. So you can do kind of what you want to with it. I've got one that I did just a basic uh, tap tempo with that um, my friend Nick is using right now. Um, and this is what I made for him. So he could have the tap tempo go into his uh, Boss Digital Delay that has a tap tempo switch. And then he's gonna have the foot switch go into his JHS um, pedal that has a switch on it for the drive more drive connection. Uh, anyway, um, I'll show more of this in a few minutes because I did do something else that's kind of cool. So all these switches are and connections are available on Amazon. This is the uh, switch. So one, two. And this is the tap tempo button so it doesn't latch. But you can also see that I've got this little mini switch put here because I put on a stereo jack. So he wanted to be able to possibly set the tap tempo for two different devices at once. I've tested it, it works. I just used it with a uh, Electro Harmonics um, Ocean's 11 and Mod 11 pedal together to see what it would do. And it did work, kind of cool. All right, and here it is assembled. Just kind of love how full that and crowded that looks. Uh, even though all it is is two switches and two input jacks and this little mini switch. Uh, this again is to switch between whether he's got one or two um, pedals that he's doing tap tempo with. And I used a stereo jack for that. There we go. But it just looks so busy and full, even though there's really nothing to this wiring. Um, I've got it labeled here so you can see which side is the stomp side and which side is the tap side. And again, we've got our tap side non-latching and our stomp side latching. Kind of cool. So my main point, test fit once, test fit twice, test fit again, because I did all my test fitting. And then um, once I had my wire in there, I'm going, oh, wow, it's even fuller looking. So, but I did test to make sure it's going to close. I used uh, JB Weld to fit that um, switch into place so I didn't have to screw it in. And uh, it's staying put, it's switching properly. So I'm gonna put the back on and it's gonna be good. And of course, a big part of the test fit process is to make sure your jack goes in and out. You can see how close quarters everything is there. Even when the jack's put in, you can see there's like almost no room. So again, yeah, make sure you test fit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. All right, finished product. Looks pretty nice, finish looks pretty good. So I did want to touch a little bit on finish. This is just a spray paint finish. Um, and then I used a clear coat on top to set the letters uh, because of this uh, type of letter that it is. It's a kind of a dry um, transfer. And so if you don't put a finish over the top of it, it's just gonna scrape right off. But I wanted to remind you that also you know, a spray paint finish is just going to chip right off um, pretty easily. Uh, it's not a powder coat, so 
um, the companies that are able to make finishes that stay on the pedal well are powder coated. So what do you do if the finish just goes to a mess? Well, I got something like this. This is a interval fuzz that I built up and you can see, look at that, the, the surface is just a mess. But it's because um, I used a clear coat that did not mesh with the finish that I used. And it's funny because it's actually the same paint for the color as I used for the clear coat. So you do want to test it and make sure. So what I did is I ended up just um, sanding it down a little bit and giving it just a vintage vibe. Don't forget to always put your uh, your own splash on there. But anyway, um, so you always want to test on a different surface to make sure that the clear coat's not going to uh, ruin your finish. But I kind of like the way this looks anyway. It looks kind of vintagey. So. As long as the darn thing works, you don't worry too much about how that finish turns out, right?